Good morning, everyone. First, we would like to read our citation for today. That would be Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. Okay, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2 said here, The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Today we will talk about the Lord is our strength. Open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope in this verses God gives them to understand that his love was moved towards them that he would perform his good his good word his promises often repeated to them that for the fulfillment of this day must pray seek and search that he would hearken and they should find him provided they sought him with their whole heart open your bible to psalm chapter 10 verse 17 10 7 Psalm chapter 10 verse 17 Psalm chapter 10 verse 17 says O Lord you have heard the desire of the humble you will strengthen their heart you will incline your ear. In these verses, even when God does not answer immediately, resulting in our frustration, believers can rest in the knowledge that he does. In fact, hear his people, knowing that God hears us, should bring encouragement and strength. During his ministry on earth, Jesus heard the cries of the poor and afflicted, and he came to their assistance. Reading scriptures in the synagogue in Nazareth, Jesus announced, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the, <clears throat> the year of the Lord's favor. Open your Bible to Psalm chapter 33, verse 18, and we will read this together. Psalm chapter 33, verse 18. Behold, 
the eye or of those who fear him, of those who hope for his love. In these verses, though all the above are unveiling, yet here is one thing that can never fail, the eye of the Lord. The watchful providence of the Most High is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. To fear God is to hope in God's steadfast love. That's not the way we normally think of fear. We think of fear of being afraid of something. If I'm afraid of something, I might want to run from something. I might not want to be near that thing. But to fear God is to hope in God and specifically to hope in his steadfast love. And as we let this soak, I mean, and as we let this soak in more and more, it starts to make sense. To fear God means that you don't fear anything else because you know the God who is sovereign, all powerful, all wise, and all loving over everything. You fear him, so you worship him. You stand in awe of him. You revere him. And because you do, you know there is nothing this world can do to you. Nothing any man or woman can do to you. Nothing that could happen to you that can take away your hope because your fear. Refer God and your hope is in him and his love for you. Open your Bible to Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18 it says, The Lord is near to the broken hearted and, and saves those who are spirit. In these verses, Jesus began the sermon on the mount with the words, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Scholars debate whether this should be considered a command to the to be poor in spirit, or whether it is only the statement of a fact. Those who happen to be poor in spirit are blessed because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. In this psalm, it seems clear that those who are going through trials are the ones who are crushed in spirit. In light of the promises made by the psalmist for those who take refuge in the Lord, we can assume that he's talking about those who find trouble, not because of their unrighteousness, but because there is trouble in this world. He promises that the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. In the same way, Jesus, encouraged, Jesus gives encouragement to the poor, In the same way, Jesus gives encouragement to the poor in spirit. The psalmist wants to let the righteous who are suffering know that God will be close to them and deliver them. Jesus said that to them belongs the kingdom of heaven. Open your Bible to Psalm chapter 94, verse 19, and we will read this together. Psalm chapter 94, verse 19. In these verses, sometimes we can get so caught up in our circumstances and we're just rushed that we get overwhelmed. In Psalm 94 was written during a time of great persecution 
within the church. Yet the psalm is penned. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Even in the midst of adversity and anxiety, God provides encouragement and support. We can get so caught up in trying to control our own circumstances and leave that we forgot the simple strength of be still and know that I am God. In Psalm 46.10 said, Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You can't be comforted or consoled when you're running and being busy. Slow down and let God's consolation bring you joy. When anxiety is great with you, and even when it's not, let God refresh your spirit and renew your strength. Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong path. The righteous man runs into it and is good. The little book of Proverbs is overflowing with great truths, which, if taken to heart by believers and applied to their everyday Christian life, would turn the tables on the wiles of the wicked one, whose evil desire is to render the witness of believers as impotent. God identified his name to Moses as, I am that I am, for he is everything that we need in every area of life. One beautiful of the Lord can be seen as a strong tower, where the righteous runs into it and are saved. What a precious promise for all God's children. The Lord began to unveil his holy name and perfect attributes from the first verse of Genesis, where we discover him to be the all-powerful creator. To Adam, he became his relational Lord, and Abraham saw him as the almighty God, who was his master and provider. To Moses, the friend of God, he became his banner and sanctifier while Gideon found him to be his perfect peace, which passes all understanding. David discovered the Lord was his tender shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And Ezekiel worshipped the righteous God whose name is Jesus. Open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And we will read this together. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Okay, church, read with this together. But they in, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, contains a great promise of strength for the wearer. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not beware. They shall walk and not faint. This promises a supernaturally renewed strength, a strength that would compare to mounting up as an eagle or running without fatigue. But what does this mean and how do we receive 
the Israel, the Israelites who first received this promise were worn out from their hardship. They had lived in exile in Babylon for several decades. Their perspective was darkened by despairing thoughts. My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. They thought God either couldn't help or didn't care. Isaiah uses a pair of words, pain and weary. Three times in the span of a few verses, here they were exhausted and burdened from the circ circumstances of life. They weren't just weak in body, but weak in spirit. How could they endure the hard circumstances of life any longer? Isaiah responded to this question with his own. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. This is a good word for the weary. You may grow faint, but God doesn't. God is an endless source of strength, and he gives it generously. He gives power to the pain and to him who has no who has no might he increases strength. This is who he is. The ever strong and never weary one loves to help weak and wear people. Open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Let's read this together. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 says, When you, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Then they shall have all in this verses, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burdened, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the Lord, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him, says the Lord. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through any potential obstacle, God will be with us. God will be with us, and you must walk through the fire. Then you shall not be burned. When God is with us, he is for us, and who can be against us? Open your Bible to Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. 24 and we will read this together chapter 3 verse 22 to 24 
Okay, we will read this together. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 24 says, in lamentations verses, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I think this passage is the perfect reminder for us today. Many find themselves in dire situations that seem hopeless, but these promises still ring true. God's mercies are new every morning. The book of Lamentations deals with suffering, more specifically the suffering of God's people. Amid unthinkable tragedy, Jeremiah described the, his agony in the face of this suffering. Despite the heartbreak and agony, this book still contains an incredible message of hope. And that's where the meaning of lamentations shines too. Because of the Lord's, because of the Lord's great love, in the middle of the tragedy and suffering, we might be tempted to think God doesn't love us. But, in, but this passage starts off with this reminder. God loves us. God's steadfast love means firmly fixed or immovable. In other words, nothing we have faced or will face can possibly remove us from God's love to us. Everything that follows is because of God's love for us. And it's important that we keep this on the forefront of our mind. The rest of the meaning of Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22-24 ties into this first truth. His compassions never fail. This builds off the first part of this passage. God's compassion, His mercy is a byproduct of his love. Because his love is steadfast and knows no end, neither will his compassion. The word that is translated as fail or sometimes end is the Hebrew word kala. It means complete. Be concluded. Be gone. Be finished and be accomplished or come to an end. This word carries with it a finality. But in the meaning of verses, there's a never in front of it. In other words, God's mercy toward you will never finish. Be concluded or come to an end, it will never fail. Because God's love, steadfast, his mercy and compassion will continue on through eternity. God's mercies are new every morning. Every time we wake up, God's mercies are new. This is another way of showing us that God's mercy will never run out. Regardless of how often you rely on God's compassions, there will be more for you tomorrow. Now, this isn't a get out of hell free card that we can abuse. It's not a license to sin however we want. That's missing the point of the meaning of lamentation. Rather, this is an opportunity to return to God even after we screw up. We don't need to worry about God's mercy running dry. God's mercy are new every morning. This last part ties the whole passage together. We receive mercy and compassion not because we are faithful, but because God is faithful. It's his faithfulness to his promise that allows us to, re to receive his mercies. Open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1.
And we will read this together. Verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, in these verses, faith is our response to the great and steadfast love He has shown us. He's done the heavy lifting, and in response, we place our faith in Him. Now, faith isn't just about what we believe in our heads, but also how we choose to live. Our faith should have direct impact on what we do and how we do it. Faith requires action. We receive God's mercies by placing our faith in Him. God's mercies are true in the good seasons and the bad seasons. And what we need is to be reminded of this. Especially on the difficult days, God's mercies are true even then. How we go about that is through prayer isn't about getting something from God, but rather connecting with Him. When we pray, can be strengthened, encouraged, and reminded that God's mercies are new for us each and every morning. We are surrounded by noise and things that are clamoring for our attention. With all the distraction, it can be, it's hard to hear the voice of God and receive his mercy. That's why we need to be still. That's what David is getting at in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. And we will read this together. Each of us need to find time to get away from the world and focus what is most important. Being still is more challenging than ever in our culture, but it's also more important than ever. True remembering. It's so easy to forget what God has done for us and become fixated on all the problems in front of us. Through remembering how God has cared for us in the past, we can be encouraged to continue to trust in Him in the present. Remember God's mercies from yesterday so that you can be encouraged that they are still true today. By focusing. You cannot receive God's mercy if you aren't looking for God's mercy. This goes back to being still when we are con constantly moving and distracted by all the things in this world. We will never notice God's mercy. Keep your eyes on God and not the storms and distractions around you. Whatever you've done, wherever you've been, God's mercies are new for you. Every morning, His steadfast love will never fail. He's made a way for you to get back to Him and live in the love, joy, and peace that He has for you. God is with you. He has something incredible for you. And even though the world might be falling apart around you, you can still experience peace in the presence of the Lord. So we already talked about that God is our strength. And in order to have a free gift of salvation, we already know that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, for by grace 
you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God so that no many so, um, so that no may boast. So we know that salvation is a free gift of God. So this is the steps to have a third life. First, you must hear the gospel. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Okay. After we hear the gospel, we must repent. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. After we hear the gospel and repent, we must believe and confess. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And verse 10, For with the heart one believes and justified, and with the mouth one confess and faith. So now you already confess and believe. You have to be baptized. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 says, Baptism which corresponds to this now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the bad, but as an appeal to good God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So once baptized, you always be saved. No, you have to remain faithful. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, says, Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulations, and be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown. So before we um, do the closing prayer, please stand up and we will sing the invitation.